Good afternoon everyone, I'm Chris Terrell, I'm here for rotorpros.com. Just want to go over, I've added some new stuff to my cheat sheet, so I want to make a video just kind of explaining some of the advanced stats that I've added both on the team and player level. Um, so we're going to jump into that. To find a copy of this cheat sheet on a daily basis, there's multiple places that you can find it. You can first of all go to rotorpros.com. And you can find it through my Daily Fantasy Strategy article looking at cash games here. You can also go up to Articles, NHL, drop down menu. Um, you'll find my daily articles here. There's a link to the cheat sheet in there as well. You can also join us in the Roto Pros community chat. It's a Slack chat channel. And it's obviously members only, but if you're not a member, you can go over to the sign up page and multiple options here as well. So you can first of all start off with a two week trial, come in, see what we're all about. And then uh, you, you can also go in with a daily, monthly, or yearly subscription type um, that gets you access to our community chat, our skeleton lineups, our one-on-one -on -one coaching, our cheat sheets, um, all of our articles, any premium content that we come up with, videos, all that kind of stuff. So it's definitely worth uh, checking out that two-week trial, and I'm pretty sure you're going to stick around for the long haul. So once you find that cheat sheet, get a copy like this. What you're going to want to do so that you can edit it and sort some of the columns is go up to file, make a copy, name it whatever you'd like here, and then click OK. It's just going to open up the exact same cheat sheet, but what that's going to allow you um, to do is now sort columns. Like for instance on say the goalie page, any of the player pages you want to sort by FanDuel, you're playing FanDuel and you want to sort that column. Anywhere in this column J, I'm just going to click in there, go up to data, sort Z to A, and now all the players in that column are sorted by highest to lowest rather than by DraftKings. Just if you're playing that way, if you want to look at maybe goalies, who's got the most wins. So you go into the win column, you hit data, and there. So first of all, a couple things with the cheat sheet um, I want to go over. Uh, first of all, on the matchups page, we've got away home team there. We've got uh, whether team's playing on a back-to-back -back or a third and four. So every row here um, is looking at that team. So this row, all the stats that you're going to see over here are going to be for San Jose. This one for Buffalo. I just highlight it green for the home team, blue for the away team. That coincides with the home road record over here. Um, before, same thing as before, we've got the odds over under projection, uh, projected goals for that night, um, overall record. And then we jump over here, we've got offense versus the opponent's defense, and that's just goals per game and goals against per game. Um, home road split, same as before. This is Buffalo's home offense versus San Jose's road defense, and then San Jose's road offense versus Buffalo's home defense. Then we've got power play versus opponent penalty kill. And then we get into some of the more advanced stats. Um, that I've added, and they come from naturalstattrick.com. Excellent site, definitely go check it out. Um, lots of stats looking at the uh, you know goalies, skaters, defense, um, even stats on the team level like you're going to see here. And I'm just going to start off the ones that I'm using first. We've got Corsi 4 per 60, Corsi against per 60, and Corsi 4 percentage. So first of all, Corsi, for those of you that may not know, is just looking at shots on goal plus shots that miss the net plus shots that are blocked. So it's just kind of a measure of how much a team is shooting versus how much a team is getting shot on. Um, kind of a, a possession stat that we use. A team that, you know, is taking a lot more shots than their opponent. Um, and look, that's kind of this course four percentage range. A team that's over 50% is controlling the puck a lot more than the team that, say, is under 50%. So just for instance, we've got San Jose is at a 55% course four. It's top five in the league. And right near the bottom of the league, they might even be dead last right now is Ottawa at 43 and a half. So Ottawa is kind of getting outplayed in most of their games. The possession is in, in their defensive end. Um, so that's just one thing I look at with Corsi. And then moving on, we've got shots for per 60. And I'd like to have everything um, by that six per 60 minutes metric now, not just shots per game because it just kind of links everyone together and takes out some of the sample size issues that we have with per game stats, especially when it gets on the player level. So we've got shots for per 60, shots against per 60, and shots for percentage. Um, and looking at the percentage after any of these columns, all that is is shots for divided by shots for plus shots against, and that gives you the percentage. So um, for instance, San Jose, 55.6%. That's just saying that they're taking 5.6% 5, 5 more shots than they're allowing. That's just kind of the way we look at that, where a team like Ottawa is, uh, we've got 59 
5.9% more shots against them than they are actually taking. So that's kind of the way I look at that. Uh, for goalies, I really want a team, you know, for upside, you want a goalie that's going to face a lot of shots. We're going to get into that a little bit more in the goalie section. But a team like Ottawa, um, you can kind of use the that goal. I wouldn't call them safe just because their team isn't very good. They're the dead last defense. But for upside on any given night, um, they're, they're going to face a ton of shots, which is good for upside, like I said. So some of the other advanced stats we've got going are scoring chances. Um, so we've got scoring chances for, scoring chances against, and scoring chances just anywhere inside the blue line. You can dig into these stats a little bit more. There's a ton more than just the ones I've listed here. These are the ones that I find that I'm um, using for my research on a nightly basis. And scoring chances are just when a team generates a scoring chance in the offensive zone, uh, which would be inside the blue line. So we've got scoring chances for, scoring chances against, and then scoring chances percentage. And then what I've really been looking at are the danger areas. So they, they kind of classify it as low danger, medium danger, and high danger. Um, so they've got a nice little chart over there on naturalstattrick.com breaking down how they, how they um, calculate low, medium, and high danger. I like to look at the high danger ones, especially like when it comes to the goalie level. And again, we'll get into that here shortly. But a high danger scoring chance is pretty much those scoring chances that come from, you know, right on the slot, right in front of the goalie, right around the goalie there. And you'll see that chart over on Natural Stat Trick. I'll get into some of that a little bit more explaining that uh, in some future videos here. So we've got high danger scoring chances for, high danger scoring chances against, and high danger scoring chances percentage. Um, so a team like Carolina, as you can see here, they take they takes 16 they, per 60 minutes they're getting 16 high danger scoring chances they're only giving up 10.9 so that gives them a 59.5 percent high danger scoring uh, chance percentage which is pretty huge um, and then that kind of coincides you can see they're very green um, here so a lot of their stats are good like a 71.5 Corsi 4 per 60 so taking a lot of shots um, they've been very good in the offensive end and they've been very good defensively as well so you can kind of look at it there so the other thing that, you know, they're only ranked 28th overall in goals per game, but with um, the numbers that we see here, I would put together that that team in Carolina is going to have some positive regression in the future when it comes to goal scoring, especially being the fact that they're ranked right near the bottom of the league in offense. But taking a ton of chances, 58% Corsi 4 percentage, which is number one in the league. So, you know, the they're controlling the puck a lot and they're getting a ton of uh, high danger scoring chances so they're maybe going to get some positive regression there so that's one way i like to look at that especially you know when it comes to gpps a lot of people may avoid them just looking at a simple oh they're 28th in offense why would we want to use any carolina guys you look at some of their stats though and you can definitely tell uh, the difference there so moving on um you can also find the whole league stats by looking at these stats down here so we've got team advanced stats We'll click on that here and have a look. Um, so we've got every team. We've got wins, losses. This is all the stats that uh, they provide. And this is, uh, if you go on their site, you can either look at it as a running total of Corsi 4 or you can look at it per 60. And I like to look at it per 60. It just works out a little better for trying to calculate on a nightly basis. Uh, the ones in orange here are just the ones that I've uh, used on the cheat sheet that I've linked across, but they've got so many different stats. And to find out what any of these headings mean, just definitely head over to naturalstatric.com very bottom of the page you can click glossary I'm just gonna bring that up now Peter's going a little slow here yeah so when you jump over to natural stat trick here what you're gonna see is you can sort by players teams uh, and if you're looking for the glossary go down here and hit glossary and this is going to show you the meaning of all the different stats columns on on their site, on the team level, on the player level. So you can learn what all these mean. Um, but the ones I've explained are the ones that are in orange. And then same with the player advanced stats level. This is where I get uh, the shots for individual course. We'll get into that as we get into the player level. But you can look at any player stats here. So if you're looking for any individual player, definitely just go up to the search here. Control F and uh, search a player like Crosby you know if you're doing some research maybe for season long if you're using the sheet for season long um, I only list the players on the individual tabs who are playing that night so you can definitely jump in here if you want and have a look at uh, pretty much any player 
Then we've got the goalie advanced stat, same thing, we'll get into that. And uh, speaking of which, we'll get into the goalies here. So as you've seen in the past, confirmation, that just shows you that the goalie is starting tonight. There has been that confirmation. We've got team, odds, DraftKings, dollars, points per game, FanDuel, FanDuel points per game, and then 2018 stats. Now when you see highlight on here, green are going to be my core plays, and then blue is going to be GPP only. If you see any red, they're either injured or out. So as I get news throughout the day, I will highlight those players um, in red. So these are here. These are just your simple stats, games played, wins, losses, shutouts, and goals against average. And then in the advanced stats section, I'm looking at how many shots against per 60 that that goalie faces, what their save percentage is overall, and then their high danger shots against per 60, and then their high danger save percentage. So if you get a goalie who's facing a lot of high danger shots against per game, as you can see here, Pecorine is facing over 8, which is close to the top of all the goalies that have played um, you know, a lot of games. He's got a 9-10 high danger save percentage, which is pretty incredible, um, you know, making that many saves from that zone. So you kind of want someone who's good save percentage, but that doesn't tell the whole story. I like to look at the high danger side of things too, just to kind of confirm that that goal is, you know, in the elite territory. So it's obviously the high danger save percentage is always going to be lower than the overall save percentage when looking at that, but that's how you can break that down. And then we've got team ranks. So we've got uh, Nashville's defensive rank versus Colorado's offensive rank, and then the difference between the two. So obviously a higher number is better for the goalie on any given night. For Dubnik, for example, uh, Minnesota's ranked fourth defensively, while their opponent, Arizona, is ranked 29th offensively. So that gives him uh, quite a bit of an advantage looking at that. Same with penalty kill and power play. And of course tonight while we're on this column, uh, Carter Hutton is one of my favorites. He's a little more expensive on DraftKings, but at 7900 in FanDuel, he's almost a lock for me, even though it is San Jose. Um, San Jose struggled a bit on the road lately. Um, so you can definitely, you know, that's why I'm looking at him. He's been incredible. He's won eight straight games. Buffalo's on a roll. Um, they're, they're underdogs here, um, but I definitely like Hutton tonight. I like Buffalo to keep it going at home. And then Devin Dubnik makes a ton of sense as well. He's at home. He has struggled a bit lately, and that's why I've got him labeled as a GPP only. But he is a minus 185 favorite versus Arizona, who's just really been struggling offensively. And like I said, they're 29th overall now on offense. And I think they've been only been averaging about a goal and a half per game over their last uh, 10 or 11 games. So, Moving on to centers. Same thing here. We've got the 2018 stats. I've removed the 2017 stats. And then the advanced stats, we've got shots per 60. And I, like I said, I like to put this all the stats now into per 60 ratings. It just kind of gives you a better look. You know, so you don't see a guy who's, you know, way up there, but he's only played two or three games. So, you know, it just takes out some of that variance there as well. So looking at shots per 60, and then I like to back that up with Corsi 4 per 60, which again is total shot attempts. So if I see a guy with, a, you know, getting a lot of shots... I want to make sure he's getting, you know, his Corsi's up there, or maybe someone that's getting low shots but has a high Corsi number is going to see that regression moving forward and is probably going to start getting some more shots on goal per game. So then we've got scoring chances per 60 that you can break out. So as you can see, um, Jack Eichel, and, it you know, it makes sense. He's only got five goals and 23 assists. He's getting a lot of shots, but his scoring chances, you know, he's a little low um, compared to all the other guys in this price range. When it comes to scoring chances so that's the number one you know he's more of a playmaker than a goal scorer um so that's something you can look at uh, when breaking down on the player level he is definitely one of my favorites i just think he's too cheap and i think his price is down just because he's not getting the goals but he, he's just too cheap for the production that he's putting out there uh you know he his points per game he's right up there almost in the Connor mcdavid mckinnon sagan when it comes to points per game Braden point on the other hand you know, he doesn't get a lot of shots. We talked about it before. His shot volume is a little bit lower than other players. Same with his course before, but he gets a ton of scoring chances, and that's why you see him with 17 goals. So while you think that's mostly a, you know, GPP play, I think he makes sense because he's getting all those scoring chances and he's converting on them that he makes sense in all formats. And then Connor McDavid and Tyler Sagan uh, against each other tonight. I got them as GPP simply because I like going more of the mid-range with Point and Eichel, and even down in Evgeny Malkin. 
the fact that Malkin is the eighth most expensive center on DraftKings tonight, he's right up there on FanDuel, but on DraftKings, I think he makes a lot of sense um, at his price at only 6500 Got Eric Stahl for GPP. Sean Couturier makes a lot of sense as well. Um, something I'm going to just bring across here. Is just kind of looking. I like to use this as kind of a gauge. You can look at the last 10 games, though, you know, throwing everything into a cheat sheet. DraftKings does this very well, where you can go in here and at a glance, you can look at his overall production or his last 10 games. 13 points in his last 10 games after I think he only had three or four points in his first 10 or 11 games of the season, so he's really come on strong. He skates on the top line, top power play unit, gets over 20 minutes of ice time, and he's averaging three shots per game over those last 10 games, so he's kind of hitting on everything there. And at 5,900 on DraftKings, 6,500 on FanDuel, makes a lot of sense there. Um, Patterson and Koivu I like as GPP plays tonight. Uh, Ryan Johansson I always like as GPP. His shot volume is way down, as you can see here. Corsi number is down. Uh, scoring chances are down. So he's a guy, but he does skate on the top line with Philip Forsberg, who's very explosive. So definitely like uh, looking at him there. Same with Nolan Patrick. He skates on Philly's second line. Just a great matchup versus Ottawa tonight if you want to go with a cheap center, maybe combined with one of the top guys in GPPs. So all the stats are going to be the same for wingers. Some of the guys I like. Patrick Line is coming off five goals and if you look at it's just he's such a streaky scorer started out the season like three goals in his first 12 games and now he's got 16 goals in his last 10 46 shots on goal in that time so now is definitely the time to jump on him his price is sky high of course but when he's streaky you want to get uh, you want to get on him until he cools off pretty much um, I'm, I'm willing to go more than one game um, waiting for him to cool down Kucherov, Forsberg I talked about uh, for cash games. I love Jeff Skinner and Kyle Connor tonight in that mid-range. Skinner skates with Jack Eichel. And to check out line changes, another site that I love is Daily Faceoff. So just go up to line combinations. We'll go to Buffalo here real quick and just kind of look at the way they set that up. So first of all, it's going to show you uh, the thing to look at is the last update. So November 27th, that's today's date. So this will be after morning skate info. Uh, Skinner skates with Eichel. Sam Reinhardt's up there in the top line with them. So you can check out their top, you know, their top four lines here, top defensive pairings. And then I like to always look at their power play units as well to see how they've got that set up. So they all skate together. The top line's all on the top power play unit. Not every team's going to do that. A lot of teams will mix their first line. Um, and second line up into their top power play unit, kind of make one really powerful power play unit. Some teams like to split it up. So that's something I like to look at there when it comes to that. And then some other players that I like tonight, core players, I like Alex Tuck. His shots have come down, like he was running like a 24, Corsi 4 per 60 in a small sample size to start the season. He's now back down kind of in that average uh, 16 range is still a little bit high, but he is not generating the shots on net as he was earlier in the season, but the production is still there. 17 points in 17 games now. Um, he's out there over 17 minutes per game. And if we go look at uh, Vegas's line combinations for today, what we're going to see there, he's skating on the second line uh, with Max Pacioretty, taking a while to load here, but he has been skating on the top. Yeah, Cody Eakin and Max Pacioretty and Alex Tuck there on the second line. You look at the first power play, and he's centering the, the first power play unit uh, with Jonathan Marcheseau and Riley Smith. So there's an example of a team that's combining their top two lines and making one, uh, you know, top power play unit. Another player like uh, Jason Pominville, a little bit less now, but his price is still down there. He's generating some shots for sure and some scoring chances. And then moving on um, to the defensive side of things. It's all the same stats there as well um, when it comes to the advanced stats kind of went through them shots for defense I'm looking a lot at blocks so we've got blocks per 60 I want guys that are high in that area and we talked about Edler he's back now so I'm kind of avoiding him at the moment just because he's uh, you know just coming back from injury I think this is his second game back so kind of looking at that there staying away from him for a bit the guys that I'm looking at most at the top of the defense tonight are Roman Yossi Going against uh, Colorado, Dumba, and Bufflin. So I'm just going to go look at some of these guys here real quick. We look at Yossi. 
He's their top guy. Skates over 26 minutes per game, which is great. He's not only getting the upside uh, with points. He's got 17 in 24 games, 9 in his last 10, but 41 shots, 13 blocks. So he's not really a big shot blocker, but he generates a lot of shots. So definitely willing to pay up for him. My favorite guy tonight is going to be Matt Dumba. He is, again, 40 shots in his last 10 games, 13 blocks. So he's generating a lot of scoring chances there with his shots. Um, he's got the upside with the points. He's getting over 23 minutes per game, and he's a little bit cheaper, so it's 6,100 there. And then Dustin Bufflin for Winnipeg, uh, really on Winnipeg, averaging a point per game. He's been the assist guy, 10 assists in his last 10 games, 32 shots and 10 blocks in his last 10 games. Um, going a little bit lower on the chart, looking at some of the core plays, I like Colin Miller. Um, he skates Vegas' second pairing, so he gets a little bit less ice time than some of the other guys, 21.4 minutes per game. But he jumps up and skates, like I mentioned, with uh, Tuck, Marchessault, so, Riley Smith, and Max Pacioretty on the top power play unit. So I really like that for him as well. And for a defenseman of 15, over 15, Corsi 4 per 60 is really good, so I'll definitely like him there. Uh, Chicago's defense has been pretty putrid this season, same with their penalty kill. So I like uh, jumping on the Vegas. I like Vegas tonight for sure, even though they're going into Chicago. And then Ryan Ellis for Chicago as well. He's more, usually more of GPP, but he gets, he's getting a lot of ice time, like 24 minutes per game. And if we go look at him a little bit closer, he's only got four points in his last two games, but he's got a really nice balance of shots, 26, and blocks 17, which gives him a really nice floor. Um, so I don't mind using him in cash games for his price. And then Brandon Montour, Jared Spurgeon, those are two guys I like for value, kind of in that mid 4K range on both sites. And that's kind of, you know, most most days I'll try and go and punt with a few guys down in the bottom area and try and get in that 3,000 range, but I've been finding a lot of success lately. I'm um, going with not your top tier guys in the, the 6 range, but kind of a little bit lower, like with uh, Doomba, Bufflin, uh, Miller, Ellis, one of those guys. And then jumping down and going with like a mid to low 4K guy on defense just kind of gives you a little bit higher of a floor and there's not a lot of um super the the sites have been really good at picking up on like ian cole was one he was blocking a ton of shots there for a while and his price just kind of shot through the roof and now it's finally starting to come down again but he's not performing the same so um they've been really good at adjusting on those on those players this year so i've been finding it harder to uh kind of punt with defense so that kind of covers all those stats. Uh, like I said, if you want to see anything when it comes to team stats, goals per game, that kind of thing, you can use these other tabs below. Uh, the home road splits, we've got uh, player stats, we've got goalie stats, and then we've got the player advanced stats, the goalie advanced stats, and the team advanced stats. So that pretty much covers everything. Uh, make sure, like I said, if you've got any questions, you can either A, hit me up on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs 9 or jump into the Roto Pros community chat. I'm in there, you know, pretty much all day. Got notifications on my phone if I'm happen to be away from my computer. Uh, skeleton lineups uh, where we leave two or three spots open on the line. Just kind of give you a glimpse into our, our core players on each night. Those come out about an hour to an hour and a half before our lineup lock. And if you make sure to like the video, uh, share it, uh, subscribe if you want. We've got a ton of videos out for different sports. So sign up to the Roto Pros youtube channel and turn on notifications you're going to get an email whenever we got new videos coming out thanks for watching and let's see some green screens tonight everyone good luck